Dr. Wartz, thank you very much for joining us here on Health Connection. Our topic and our segment is titled Seasonal Affective Disorder, the Lowdown Winter Blues. So we like to start with definitions. What is Seasonal Affective Disorder, known as SAD, and is that acronym actually appropriate? It is appropriate. Seasonal Affective Disorder is characterized by SAD mood. Um, and it's, it's a seasonal mood that happens to a number of people as the seasons change. Um, and they have depressed mood. It happens as a part of major depressive disorder or bipolar disorder. Uh, and what we find is that uh, as the, the seasons change, these symptoms start creeping up on people that make them increasingly sad. What are we looking for? What are the signs and symptoms of this disease? Well, some of the signs and symptoms are those that are common to major depressive disorder, which are decreased concentration, irritability or low mood, uh, lower self-esteem, a change in thought pattern there, where people think that the future is less bright than it was before. But also in seasonal affective disorder, you have an increased sense of lethargy, um, a leaden feeling that makes people feel very tired, they sleep more, and they feel really run down. Um, there's also an interesting trait that is common for this disorder and that's a feeling of rejection by peers or family. So people get sensitive to feeling rejected by others. What's the seasonality? Why, what, what's the component of seasonality in this? The main component is light. As the days shorten, people get less light exposure and, and they do less well and they get sadder as the days get shorter. Um, interestingly, it happens about six or weeks or so after uh, the summer solstice. So you can start seeing symptoms at that time. Well, you, this may segue into the next question. What causes seasonal affective disorder? Well, it is exposure to light or the loss of light. Um, the exact causes are not known because some, obviously some people get it and other people don't. Um, we know that the further away that you live from the equator, the more likely it is that you will have this disorder. Because of the shortness of the days in the winter? Right, okay. right. And then also um, there's a family component like most mood disorders and uh, there's that. What's interesting is there's, uh, they've done some uh, PET scans on the brains of people who have this disorder and the, the scan actually um, shows that serotonin is leaving the brain as the days get shorter. Uh, mediated by looks like these little transporters that are made out of protein uh, and so the brain actually changes as the days shorten. How do you get a diagnosis? How is this condition diagnosed? Well it's diagnosed by your physician or your psychologist or LPC um, and uh, the way that they look at the disorder is they look for, for the seasonal component that the disorder happens um, at least two years in a row uh, without a mood problem in between. There's not a mood problem the other seasons of the year. Um, and so if you can pick up on those uh, two years of discrete seasonal pattern, then, um, then you can diagnose the seasonal affective disorder. So how do you know if you have a case of SAD or not just a case of feeling a little bit blue during the holidays? Well, the difference is in functionality and length of time. If your functioning uh, decreases dramatically, then you know it's time to see the doctor or the psychologist. Um, and then uh, also what you'll see with uh, winter blues or holiday blues is that it doesn't last as long. Um, it may last a week or two and then you're back to your old self, usually after the holiday is over. Possessed of a diagnosis, how do we treat it? Well, there's, there's some neat things about treating seasonal affective disorder, and that is, uh, not surprisingly, light therapy, or, or phototherapy is what it's called. And there's two different types of uh, light therapies that you can do. One is a, a device that um, you set to go off uh, in, in the early morning hours, and it's like dawn rising, only dawn is rising earlier in your bedroom than it does outside. Uh, the other is a, a light box of 10,000 Lux, which is a bright light, doesn't matter what the wavelength is of the light. Some people used to think that that was a problem, but it's not. It's just brightness. Um, and you, ex you sit under that for 15 minutes to two hours, depending on the, its effect on you. It clears it up sometimes within two days. It's very effective. There are other treatments too, like um, uh, antidepressant medication that you can get from your primary care physician. Um, with seasonal affective disorder, there's some indication that 
extended release Wellbutrin is the better medication for this disorder. And then of course there's things like what I do, which is talking therapy, psychotherapy, to help people deal with the change in their attitudes as well as their emotions. Is seasonal affective disorder just another form of depression or is it somehow different? Well, it is different because it's linked specifically to the seasons. And, um, you know, all depression has, is linked to um, your biochemistry as well as the events around you. But seasonal affective disorder more than any other is pretty clearly linked to outside, not, not situations like a, a bad relationship, but, but the fact that the light is changing through the day. Interesting. Are some people at greater risk than others? Yes, they are. Women are at greater risk for seasonal affective disorder, and um, younger women are at greater risk for this disorder. Also, people who have it running through the family uh, as well. Is there a connection between seasonal affective disorder and vitamin D? Um, there may be. That's not clear. Um, there may be a greater link between seasonal affective disorder and melatonin. Um, vitamin D, as you know, is linked to our sun exposure as well. Um, but there are different patterns with vitamin D um, that don't line up with seasonal affective disorder. For example, uh, the metabolism of vitamin D decreases in women as they age. And so you would expect if it was seasonal affective disorder linked that uh, they would also have more of that disorder during uh, later years. And that's not the case. If an individual feels that he or she is suffering seasonal affective disorder or recognizes the symptoms in someone mm -hmm. close to them, what should he or she do? Well, it, it never hurts to come see the physician. Your primary care physician is well equipped to help you with that disorder, as is a psychologist or licensed professional counselor. Very well. Doctor, very enlightening. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. It's nice to be here.